I'd love to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel for my initial coverage of Pluralock Security, Inc., uh, ticker symbol on the company traded on OTCQB under the ticker symbol PLCKD. I just went through a, a recent stock uh, consolidation, and it was uh, previously PLCKF. Not to get those confused, I will leave those into the description below, as well as trading on TSXV under PLUR. Again, we'll leave that in the description for you. Please understand the Independent Investor Channel is uh, paid to provide this awareness to you an introduction to this exciting company. We're going to talk about some of the attributes uh, in the making of this video, cover some of what you can find on Pluralock.com. I encourage you and invite you to do the same. Fantastic website, flush with information. You can sign up for their newsletters and be privy to all of the advancements in the company. There has been many to boast here just in April alone. Uh, and it's going to be fun to track the performance of this company and where the CEO, Ian Patterson, uh, looks to marshal this project in 2024 and beyond. Um, this is a cybersecurity play. It provides IT and cybersecurity solutions to government and commercial clients alike. Uh, they provide them in North America as well as NATO countries uh, worldwide. Um, they really do leverage their opportunity to ex really penetrate a $300 billion cybersecurity market. We all know the need for cybersecurity. Um, they've got world-class leadership. We'll talk a little bit about uh, both the managing board uh, and the directors with the company. Um, but they do sell their products to blue chip clients. Um, they are a fast-growing uh, managed service business. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Very exciting from a value perspective perspective, always looking to provide that deep value to uh, to clients out there looking for opportunity in the microcap space. And then um, with their four acquisitions, not to um, dismiss the opportunity that uh, Pluralock may have by future M&A opportunity. Uh, and Ian Patterson has spoke about that as of late. Uh, Pluralock has uh, their critical solutions business as well as uh, their AI uh, cyber solution um, software as a solution software, as well as their Aurora and Integra uh, solutions division. We'll talk a little bit about those businesses a little bit more more as we get into the content in this video. But when we start to look at the need for cybersecurity, it is no secret as to why large companies and small alike need these services. But we are in a period in history right now where there is global international conflict uh, as well as um, increased regulation in the space. Uh, and also continued skills shortage within the space, uh, all the while in the face of cyber losses that account to 74% here in 2024, uh, year over year. So the need just continues to grow. And with the $300 billion addressable market here, Pluralock looks to um, really penetrate that market with offering their unique solutions to the grander marketplace. They operate across three business units, the solutions division, uh, the Pluralock critical uh, services business, which is the fast growing uh, aspect, as well as Pluralock uh, SaaS platform. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but their high ma margin upside for critical service comes from the product relationship uh, and slimmer margin uh, resale track record. And it was an interview that I caught with Ian that really explained once Pluralot gets in the door with these customers that they serve, it, it becomes quickly apparent that um, it is in that company's and many others to just keep them on board indefinitely. And that's what ends up happening. Uh, furthermore, I think there's a misconception that um, these smaller uh, cybersecurity companies um, don't have a chance to play uh, at the table, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, these companies can employ upwards of a few hundred uh, cybersecurity companies, uh, from large companies to small companies. And the small micro cap companies are far and few between, most being dominated by the large um, macro cap um, and the large cap companies that we, we know, Palantir, uh, CrowdStrike, just to name a few. 
Um, and I think companies like Pluralock uh, sometimes get dismissed as a microcap company, but they earn their place at the table by the services that they provide. And, and once they show that they have that opportunity to provide that critical services to the, to the clients that they serve, um, they usually are awarded with um, uh, continued business and in a lot of cases, much higher margin businesses. And Pluralock has historically profited from those opportunities. The Pluralock SaaS uh, opportunity is an advanced multi-platform zero trust all-in-one security platform. In a nutshell, that basically means as I'm moving in front of my computer and as I'm you know, working the mouse and actually operating on my keyboard, the Pluralock uh, software actually maps my performance, my unique performance, my attributes. Um, and through its uh, patent protected proprietary software actually maps a profile that actually reads my profile and only my unique profile uh, over the course of a couple of days sets a baseline and then continuously monitors and fine tunes that profile. Fascinating stuff. Very interesting to hear Ian profile this um, uh, this uh, service and what it means to the client and how necessary that is in today's environment. Uh, the Pluralock critical services business, it is the newly formed aspect of the business, guys, and I'm telling you, it is on fire. Margins are on fire. They went from 742000 of revenue last year, not to shake a stick at, uh, only to top that almost 4x at $2.8 million. Uh, I presume that that will continue to grow, and it's going to be one of those aspects that I am going to be happy to report on as it is the fastest growing segment at 33%, uh, as much as 55% gross margins in that segment of their business. Um, and and uh, sporting 134% compounding annual growth rate over that aspect. So um, fantastic growth there. It really is going to be a key contributor uh, in not only their margin expansion, but also their uh, eventual uh, march toward uh, a potential break even at some point in the future. Uh, management is strong. I already talked about Ian Patterson, who I am um, more and more impressed with every time I hear him talk. He has command over his business. Business. He has a vision to where he wants to take this company um, and expanding on all fronts, whether it be through the delivery of their traditional service, expanding upon their service business, um, or keeping an eye out for those opportunistic M&A opportunities. And he spoke recently about how important it's been bringing on his new CFO, Scott Myers, into the fold, who has enacted really a cost-cutting and cost savings initiative that hasn't compromised anything with the core business, um, rather just put them on a much more lean tra trajectory to preserve capital at a time where I think it was prudent to do so. Pluralock has uh, incurred quite a business restructuring with the share consolidation uh, and many other things, whereas the demand for their product has never been so hot. Um, so an incredibly interesting and intriguing time from a, from a value perspective. And I know there's other independent investors out there looking at these deep value propositions with Pluralock. And it, it's going to be interesting to see how they expand over time and, and leverage those opportunities. The director and advisory board, uh, they just named Ali. Uh, Hakim Shada, I know Ali. It was great to see his name there, um, only to be associated with companies that uh, he has just taken and leveraged um, and pushed into success. And I, I know with Ali at the head of that advisory board, it's a seat well filled, and he is absolutely versed in filling that chair. I want to talk a little bit about enterprise value for Pluralock being at 0 0.09 times sales. When you take Pluralock versus its peers, this slide really spoke to me with regard to the value proposition and how it stacks up against its peers in both the um, mid-cap market as well as the large cap market. You can see here the companies vary from market caps uh, over a billion dollars all the way down into um, the double-digit million-dollar market cap, but the aggregate averages when compared to um, the trailing 12 months of revenue puts uh, Pluralock in about a one-fifth 
uh, of the average value aggregate when you look at those companies as a whole and take that uh, aggregate value. This slide really spoke to me with regard to the deep value that actually exists with Pluralock, and I, I, I think you'll see that too. Um, I've mentioned the business transformation announcement, and we're going to continue to cover Pluralock throughout uh, the year here in 2024 and track some of these massive changes. I mentioned Ali taking over the executive chair um, on the executive board. I think that's a, a net positive. Uh, I know it's a net positive for Pluralock, and I was glad to see that. Uh, with Pluralock, it's going to be awesome. I invite you to sign up for the investor updates as I did. Um, I'll put the links here on the screen for you. Go ahead and sign up. Check out the website, Pluralock.com. I found it to be very, very intriguing. Um, and uh, it, it sign up for those updates, and we can continue to track the progress going forward in 2024. If you enjoy the information coming through the Independent Investor Channel, I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave your comments at the bottom of this video and uh, hit the notification bell so you can be notified of future videos just like this as we track the Pluralock story going forward, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in for the totality of the video and good luck in your investment future. <laughs>